Welcome back everybody. This video we're going to continue our discussion on TypeScript, going through whatever else we might need to get it up and running in our application. I'm going to give you a few tips to make it easier as well, so let's just get started. Real quick, I want to say a special thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is Ultra Edit, the editor we've been using for this series. If you're looking for a customizable editor, then check out the link down below. So to begin, we're going to continue to execute our code the way we did in the previous video, which is to use TSC dash p for project passing in our config and then dash dash watch which will continually refresh the javascript files whenever there's a change you may see other approaches out there for example a very common one is ts node or ts node dev after recording this video i learned that nodemon actually supports typescript so you could just say nodemon source slash app dot ts and that will compile and run your code and it'll be in watch mode so any changes will automatically refresh that server so you can see those changes right away. And that's made possible thanks to TS node behind the scenes so you can look that up as well. But we're not going to get into that in this video and that's okay. It's just another way of compiling and improving the overall dev experience for TypeScript. But our setup's working pretty good, so what I'm going to do is just go into our package.json. And for these scripts here, I'm just going to add a new one, so that way we can just execute this really quickly. You can call this whatever. I'm just going to call it watch, and this will have the value of this right here. So now I should just be able to say npm run watch, and then it will start the compilation in watch mode. Now if you do go down the route of ts node dev, I think it has the ability to do the compilation and running all within a single command. It'll just compile on the fly, so that might be handy. So now that we can run this and see our code, just like we had in the previous video, and we can start making changes to our code. So the very first thing I want to do is just remove this line, and this is going to bring up the obvious errors in our code. Now to see these, I'm just going to switch over to the other terminal, and the error says cannot redeclare block scope variable mongoose. So we're gonna talk about the fix for this, but we're gonna change a lot in this file and in the process, this error will go away. So specifically, the problem is rooted in this line here and we can actually change the way we are importing. So instead of using a require, we can use an ES6 import statement which we talked about at the very beginning of the series and said we might see them later. Well, here they are. So we can say import and inside of curly braces, exactly what we want from Mongoose. And then inside of the curly braces, we are going to import schema and model. So specifically, the schema refers to this here, and then this model refers to this here. This means we no longer need to prefix these with Mongoose since they are available directly. And just like we changed the import, we can change the export as well. So instead of doing this module.exports, which is kind of confusing and I kind of don't super get them, we can use a regular export for ES6 modules. And what that's going to look like is imagine assigning this model customer, customer schema to something. If we wanted to identify this, we would most likely call it customer. And that's exactly what we were doing originally. If you take a look back at app.ts, we were importing what was being exported from that file as customer. So this is the same concept, but now what we can do is we can just say const customer and export this. So we are now using the import and export statements, which in my opinion are much more clean and easier to understand. So now all we would need to do is import customer in that other file, which is going to refer to our collection. So over in app.ts, if we remove this line here, it's going to freak out because we're gonna have tons of errors. Ignore those, all I need you to pay attention to for now is that it says found 26 errors. And what we could do is we can replace this line on line three with the new import. So it will look like, let me go ahead and just go down to the next line, import, customer from and then give that same path use of above dot slash models customer and then we'll just remove this line altogether save and it still has 26 errors and hopefully everything just works the way we expect now just to check that things are working the way we expect you might not be able to very easily because you got all these errors and you'll have to go through all your code and assign types to everything so it would be nice if we could do that no check thing but just for you know these problems and you can do it line by line or an alternative 
If you want to learn the line by line one, you can just look it up. But what I'm going to do is show you something inside of TS config. The important one here is no implicit any. Set this to false. Now, I'm not saying you should do this. I'm just saying this will allow you to get rid of these errors. It's basically just going to reduce the benefit of TypeScript, but it does allow us to code a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and uncomment that. I guess I'll bring that back to there. And then as well as this, use unknown in catch variables. You can see we're getting errors for ease of type unknown, which is going to be the default for exceptions. And what we can do is say use unknown to false. And that should get rid of those errors as well, making sure to uncomment that line as well. So some strange changes. If you're new to TypeScript, you might just be a little confused. But the main thing you should know is just set those to false to get started. And then maybe when you go into production, change those to true to make sure you're not missing anything important. But for now, it is good. Our import appears to be working and we have zero errors. You can see that our server is still running. So let's give it a go. Make sure it's still working the way we expect. Here we can go to localhost 3000 API customers and see that we're getting some data. Everything appears to be working the way it once did. And now what we can do is just continue to build on this by replacing these require statements with import statements if you wish, and then go in and assign types to the different variables. Now one more comment on imports and exports. You might sometimes see it like this where there's no curly braces. And whether or not you use the curly braces depends on how you define it in the code that creates that variable. So you can see we defined that here. And we have the option to pass in another keyword here called default. And if we're only going to export one thing from this file, this is typically what you would see. So export default, and then you wouldn't actually need to give it a name at all. So we'll just say export default model. And now inside of the calling code app.ts, we can name it whatever we want. So that is another way you will often see it. Or to build on this a little bit more, you might see it like this. Const customer is model customer and then customer schema. And then down on this line, you will just see export default customer. And now it's a little bit cleaner on the naming because you can see what you might be expected to name it on the import side of things. But this will allow you to basically name it whatever you want. You could name it just capital C, whatever. You'll just need to go change your code appropriately because we have it referenced as customer everywhere. So either one of those is fine. A default or a non-default import is totally okay. Thanks for watching this video on some more TypeScript import export stuff. Hopefully it was helpful and not just a bunch of junk thrown at you. This stuff can be a lot. It takes a while to actually integrate TypeScript into your project. Definitely a lot easier to start from scratch with TypeScript. So if you're going to consider using TypeScript, maybe just start with it and it'll be a lot easier to manage. But that's all I got in this one. Stay tuned for the next one where we're going to learn some more. Thank you and peace out.